Now guys, in this uh, week, I keep doing this, and this week it's not like it's a weekly broadcast, it's whenever I get time to do these things. I've been really busy, um, uh, and so much so that I uh, I have a total uh, uh, brain fart uh, halfway through it, uh, and you'll see my mental breakdown uh, in the video, so it's uh, well worth watching this. Um, I can't seem to add up to 52, which is bizarre, but anyway, uh, this... Uh, this tutorial is a little bit more scripting involved in this one, but we actually delve behind the scenes and we actually create a card model, which is an abstraction of an actual playing card. Uh, and we do the code for that. So um, stay tuned uh, after the, the fade down and we go right into it. We just go straight into the coding. Oh, we also uh, show some debugging stuff as well. So how to actually debug when you're, when you're coding things. So we rewrite a, a sort of throwaway class as well. So it's all there. It's after the, the fade which is going to happen round about now. Right, first things first. What we want to do... First things first. What we want to do is we want to create a C-sharp script called card model. Card model is going to contain all the faces for uh, our card uh, and it's going to allow us to choose what face appears on our card here. So without further ado, we're going to double click this. Oops. And my Visual Studio has decided to open on this monitor here. I'll bring it back just a sec. Uh, in the meantime though, if you are having difficulty seeing this, uh, the text is quite small. So what I suggest is that you use the high def version of it, then you'll see the, the text a little bit clearer. Okay, so for now, we're just going to create a blank class called card model. And that's going to contain all uh, the, the data as we, we just mentioned there. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, allow it to, to have a list of all the sprites that we need. So to do that, we're going to create a public field called faces. Seems a good enough value for, than anything else. Uh, and inside the faces field, that's where we're going to put our sprites. And we're going to just do it by dragging and dropping from the, the card file that we created uh, in the last um, tutorial video, whatever you want to call it. So we do public sprite faces. We also need one more uh, field here, for now anyway, uh, called, uh, which is also type sprite, and we're going to call that card back. Sorry, uh, I, I do apologize, I will be making a lot of uh, typing mistakes. <coughs> Pardon me, uh, I just got a new keyboard and I'm, I'm getting used to it. The, the key seems shifted over to the right. Uh, and it's got a set of macro keys down the, the left hand side. Um, somebody in a, a previous video was complaining that the the, uh, the sound of the keyboard was um, a bit too clacky. Uh, I happen to like mechanical keyboards, so I'm trying to uh, keep everything quiet. So anyway, that's all we need for just now because now that we have our card model, uh, we can actually apply that to our card that we already have. So if you look over here in our scene, we already have our card over here. So we're gonna go over to add component and we're going to type in, there's a little search box up here, and we can type in card model, and you see that our script has appeared here. Now, if it didn't compile, then the script wouldn't appear here, and you would notice there's a mistake. Uh, you can also find out if there's any mistakes if you go to the console window, and you'll see any errors that appear down there as well. So if you have any problems, just check down in the console window. So we have our card model here, and you see that we have faces, which has got a little twisty on it, uh, that means that we can actually drag and drop things in there because it's an, we've created an array of sprites and our last one here is our card back okay so if we go to our images folder you can see that we have our card deck here so our card deck is we're just actually going to grab the the first card there so just click on the first card there oh sorry hang on a sec First things first. If you go back up to card, what we want to do is we want to click on the little lock up here. There's a little lock up here. Now what that means is that this property inspector is now locked on this object. So if we click any other object, you see that nothing changes over here. So that's good because it means that when we click on other things, we don't accidentally move this from here. Because what we want to do is we want to click on this first one, our first card, which is the, the two of uh, hearts. We want to click on the last one, which is our spade, 
uh, our ace of spades q motorhead uh, and with them all selected drag it over until the cursor changes on the the faces field and then let go now <coughs> excuse me sorry what you'll see is you'll see all the cards are listed there zero through to 51 which is great because they're actually in the the right order so that's fantastic so now we have all of those cards now as part of our array now for the card back all we need to do is just grab a hold of the card back here doesn't matter which one you can choose other ones as well if you want i like the flower one so we're going to use the flower one in this example here but uh, you can you can choose whatever one you want so now we have a card model that has faces and a card back now that we have that we can actually do something with it we can actually show the uh, the faces on this particular card so what we will do is we will do public int card index now card index is going to be the public face of our card model now it's going to show um, it the the card model is going to use the card index as an index into this array here so this array here is going to be indexed using card index here so media g this is card index now the reason why i'm exposing it is because we want to be able to set it inside the inspector if we don't want to set it inside the inspector we can just get rid of that public uh, but we're going to have it exposed for now anyway we, we may decide to to bring it in and just make it private but for now that's what we're going to do uh, we're also going to create two public methods uh, one called public um, actually we'll just create one called public uh, void so we're going to create one called toggle face and we're going to accept a boolean value which is going to say show face um, and <clears throat> Uh, if it's false, then we're going to show the card back. So, uh, if show face the card face, else show the card back. So, we have our faces here, and we have our method here, which is our toggle face to show the face here. Uh, and we have our if statement here that says if we're showing the face then we're going to do something here otherwise we're going to show the card back so before we do that we need to get a hold of the sprite renderer for the the uh, the card now how do we get a hold of a sprite renderer well if we go back up to card I will remember to uncheck this padlock here so that you don't get um, confused with other um, objects that you're selecting so if you click, see there we have a sprite renderer we need to get access to this component now the good thing about unity is because we are part of this object this card object contains a transform which is its position space it also contains a sprite renderer which is the the card that you see here which is our um, card deck 54 which is this one down here it also create it also has a card model script as well so we can actually use uh, a method of uh, mono behavior called get component and we can get this component for sprite renderer so we're going to do that but we're going to do that actually as part of the uh, the awake method so uh, awake is actually built into mono behavior and it i won't go into it just now but trust me this is overridden for each of your mono behaviors that you create normally you'd have to do the override and all that kind of stuff but um, uh, unity doesn't make you do that so on awake we're gonna have to create uh, one up here called sprite renderer so this is going to reference the component for this object so we're going to grab a copy of that and when it, uh, when the object awakes in other words when we actually create the object we're going to grab the component that has been attached to that object so get component uh, and then we use the angle brackets and the angle brackets are, allow us to use the type that we want now 
in Unity, in previous versions of Unity, you could actually type in the, the string. That's actually uh, deprecated and not a good idea to do. So the much safer type type safe var variant of it is actually to use the angle brackets and then specify the type you want. So that's what we're going to do. And that's going to get our sprite renderer. Now that we have the sprite renderer, it's just a matter of going up to our toggle face and saying sprite renderer dot sprite equals and then whatever sprite we want. So what sprite do we want? Well, we know it's going to be one of these sprites here and we know it's going to be at this index. So it's just a matter of doing faces card index. And if we don't want to show something, if we actually want to show the, the back side of the card, what we can do is we can specify card back. So we would do sprite renderer. Oops. So if we're showing the face of the render, we if we're showing the face of the card, we tell the sprite renderer to show this sprite. Otherwise, we tell the sprite renderer to show this sprite. Okay. If we go back to Unity, we can see our little spindle down here ticking away. Everything's good. So that's fantastic. We we have a card. We can't really do anything with it just now. So you see that the card index is set to, to zero. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm I'm actually for for this um, this video anyway. We're going to create a, a temporary uh, debug uh, script, uh, and that script's going to allow us to to um, change the value of the card. So if we go over here and do create empty, uh, and then rename that debug. Actually, we'll call it underscore debug. Um, and then go down to scripts and do create, um, I'm going to call this an C sharp script. Uh, and this one is going to be called debug change card. So nothing spectacular here. So double click that. Uh, sometimes you get this, this modification and, uh, don't worry about it. I, I tend to click reload all and everything works fine. Um, I get a lot of these incon inconsistent line endings. I, I think this is because I'm using Visual Studio um, rather than MonoDevelop, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. If anyone knows, comment below and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so for our debug change card, we are going to have to create some objects here. So um, the reason why I'm doing this debug is because we don't actually want to change the code that's inside here because our card model is pretty much done. That's all that we ever need the card model to do. It, all it has to do is, is have a collection of images, um, which is uh, in here. Uh, it has a sprite for the card back and then it has the current index for the, the card. And then the rest of it is the, the, the toggle face and that's that's all we really need for it. So I don't want to add any more code to this. And so, but what's a good idea for testing is just creating throwaway code that we're never going to use in production, but it does help us um, just to make sure that our, our code is correct. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a public game object method, a uh, public game object field, uh, which is called card. Uh, and then we can change this to await and get rid of the update. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to have a private field called card model. That's all we're going to have. Uh, we're also going to have a variable called um, card index. And we're going to assign that the value zero to start with. Okay, so we have a card model, which is, these are our private member fields, and our private member fields are not seen outside the, inside the inspector. Only the public fields are, so our public field card will be seen outside the inspector. So on awake, we want to get um, the card model from this game object here. Now, we don't know if the game object has this model or whatever, but we will try and, we're going to set it up so that it does have that. So we do card model 
equals tar dot get component. Now remember I said that you could get component from any mono behavior. Well, if you actually have a game object, game object also has get component as well. So it's actually very easy to, to build up very, very complicated objects that, that rely on each other, um, but actually have are very loosely coupled as well. Um, there's other ways to do it as well where you can use interfaces, which is even more powerful. But again, we're not going to go into that right now, uh, but just to let you know that for future sake. So we want to get card model. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a GUI programming. Now, this is the old style GUI. There's uh, an even better way to do it, which is the, the new UI tools, which we're, again, we're going to show later on here, but we just want to do some debug. Uh, just now, so we're just going to create uh, our own GUI on the fly. So, hit GUI dot button uh, new rect. So we have to create a rectangle, which is the position on screen. So I'll make it ten by ten, and we will make it um, hundred across by twenty eight down. And our GUI content will be um, hit me. Now, button returns true if um, if it's been clicked on this update. So, if it's been clicked, what we're going to do is we are going to show the card. Uh, and if it hasn't been clicked, then well, we don't need to do anything. So what we're going to do is we are going to tell card model the index of the, the, the card here, which is card index. And then we're going to do card model dot toggle face true. So we are going to tell the card model what index we want to show in the card. And then we're going to make sure that that interface that uh, is shown. So we are then now going to add one to the index. So we're going to use our shortcut plus plus to add one to card index. And then we have to check to see if it's 52. If it's 52, that means it's at the end of the deck. Um, so in order to sort of make it a little bit, um, a little bit user friendly, when it's at the end of the deck, we're going to uh, set the value of card index inside here to be zero. And then we're going to flip the card and show the back of it uh, just to make it look a little bit, bit uh, nicer. So we are going to say if card index equals 52, card index equals zero. And we are going to do oops, card model dot toggle face false. And that's going to hide our card. Okay, so that's our debug card. So you can see that we're interacting with her with her card model, but the card model itself is not being changed. We don't need to change the code for card model. It stays exactly the same. We don't want to change that, uh, at least not for now, not in, in this session anyway. So now that we have that, we can click on debug make sure we don't have any console errors. Uh, these are inconsequential errors that we, we have here. Um, don't need to worry about those guys. So click on add component and then this one we want to choose debug change card. So click on that. So now our debug object has a debug change card and you see that we have a, a card field here. We're going to populate that by dragging and dropping this object on top of it. So I'm going to save the scene obviously because we're just about to run it. So our debug change card has uh, the, the card object pointed at it. If we click on card we can see that we have our sprite renderer and we have our card model. Our card model has all the faces and card back has the, the card, uh, this nice flower pattern here, the roses has been chosen and the card the current card index is zero. So when we run this, we should see hit me. So right now the card is just that. So we will hit the card and we see now we have two because that's the first index. If I show the, the images now, 
it should go up in sequence so the first uh, the zeroth card is the two of hearts then the three then the four and so on so if i keep, keep on hitting hit me you see that the cards now go up in sequence and if we keep going keep going keep going until we get to the oh here we go seven eight nine queen king and we're back to that now it didn't show the ace which is a bit worrying because i think i might have made a mistake in the calculations oh because i'm adding one to it that's why Ooh. ah right okay so if we go back to our debug code here um, because we're adding one to it it's going to get to 51 and then we're going to add to it so what we actually want to do is we want to move this one to here because we want to check if the card index is um, sorry So we want to check to see if the card index is equal to 52 and if it is we want to reset the card index to zero and then toggle the face to be false and others want to hide the card otherwise we want to add one to the card index so the next time we click it we get the next card so now spinning away down here um, when we run it actually let me bring in the camera as well so if we bring in the main camera uh, four. Two. Okay. And we will make that. There you go. A little bit better. Okay, so now when we run this and we click on hit me. It will keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, eventually we get to Jack, Queen, King, and then we should get Ace now. Perfect. And then we should get uh, the back of the card. And we don't. We get Index out of range. See, this is why we don't do things live. Okay, I'm not happy with this 52 here. This is a, um, this is a magic number magic numbers tend not to be good and we really shouldn't have that there uh, i'm also not happy with this being outside this uh, if statement here so let's move things around so let's take card index out of here and put them down the bottom and then let's take this from here and put him inside the else statement um let's change that to minus one do we want to change that to minus one? Do we? I think we do. Let's leave that just now. Let me think about that. Okay, so rather than having 52 in here, let's say it's going to be greater than or equal to card model dot faces dot length. Dot length, so that's 52. So when it gets to the end there, this is my thinking. Okay, so when it gets to the end, um, it's going to be 51. So it's going to add one to it. Uh, otherwise, if it adds one to it, then you see it's 52, which means that. We're going to set the card index to zero, so then we're going to add one to it. So the next time it comes around, it's going to be zero, and then we add one to it down here. So I think what we want to do is maybe we want to have card index to be inside that else. So if it's a card index there and we don't add to it, reset. Okay, that looks okay. Let me let me just debug that. So 
Well, this has gone on a bit too long. It's longer than I thought it was going to be. Okay, so once again, we debug. We keep clicking through, keep clicking through, and eventually we get to... Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Funny. So although this has taken us a bit of time to, to figure out, uh, the reason why we have it is so that we can actually just test the card model code itself. Um, the debug code we're going to leave for just now, but um, this is our card model code that we're going to continue on with the, the, the program. So we have uh, a sprite renderer uh, field in here. We have our three public fields for our faces, for a card back and for the card index. We have our one public method for toggling face. So we show the face, we hide the face. Uh, and then we have our await here that actually sets the sprite renderer. Well, anyway, that's it for uh, for this week. Anyway, this week, this video, uh, this tutorial. No, not this tutorial. But this is an entire series. Of... Let me start again. Okay, so that's it for this time. Um, I'm actually uh, away for the next couple of weeks, um, so there won't be any videos for me for at least two weeks anyway. Um, but please uh, stay tuned. Uh, if you want uh, timely alerts as to when I do actually post a video, then please subscribe. There's a little button over there. There's a little tiny button over there you can click on subscribe. Uh, the subscribe link is also up there, I believe, as well. Um, if you like the video, please leave uh, comments, suggestions, and everything else below, down there. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.